is a big weekend for traveling as well as people will be heading out the door for the 4th of July weekend. AAA predicts that today will be the busiest day for those traveling by air and on the roadways. Nationwide, nearly 48 million people are expected to travel about 50 miles or more this holiday weekend. Car travel is expected to hit a new record with 42 million people hitting the roadways. Of those 48 million traveling, nearly 1 million Wisconsinites will head out on the roadways by car, and that's even despite the high gas prices. AAA says we are seeing the most expensive gas prices for this weekend since 2014. Well, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. You go from like Wisconsin, you're 480, and in Michigan, some places it was 530, 540. Jesus, you know, 100 bucks to pay your tank up. Well, it's a dollar cheaper here than Illinois, so we're like anything. <laughs> that's that's great. Yeah, and those drivers say despite the high prices, it's still worth it in order to spend time with their loved ones and friends. And if you're hitting the roadways, here's a look at the average gas prices we're seeing this morning across Wisconsin. It's about $4.65 a gallon for regular unleaded. You can see there in Milwaukee, $4.75. And in our neighboring state in Michigan, you're back to paying nearly $5 a gallon. But AAA says prices are starting to slowly come down. And if you are planning to cook out this weekend, our price, tra price tracker takes a look at the price trends on popular food items. If you scan that QR code that you see on your screen here with your cell phone, you'll get a breakdown of the cost of some of these items. That's in order to help save you money in your wallet. And while millions of people are packing their bags for travel, airlines are struggling to keep up with passenger demand because of a worker shortage. While there's no quick fix, some are taking steps to avoid a crisis. With the busy season of air travel upon us, passengers are bracing for more delays as airlines deal with the national pilot shortage. But in the Pacific Northwest, a new training program aims to make a difference in the long run. We're going to make a left turn. Bailey Couturier will soon enter the Ascend Pilot Academy to pursue his dream of flying commercially. It means a lot to me specifically because I grew up in foster care. The 21-year-old from San Diego getting a preview of his future on a recent summer day. I think that I am extremely grateful that I've been given this opportunity to pursue a career in aviation without having to go in debt. The program is a partnership between Hillsboro Aero Academy and Alaska Airlines and its regional partner, Horizon Air. Upon enrollment, cadets receive a conditional job offer at Horizon and are eligible for low interest financial aid and a $25,000 stipend to cover the cost of a commercial pilot license. I get this euphoric feeling thinking to myself, wow, I can't believe this is what I'm doing. You know, and I do know that for a lot of individuals who really want to, they can't uh, because of that huge barrier, the finances. The overall training can cost about $100,000, which is often a barrier to entry, especially in an industry that severely lacks women and people of color in the cockpit. This is definitely life changing. It's opened the door for me directly to my career and my dream. The FAA requires a minimum of 1,500 flight hours to qualify for an airline transport pilot certificate, which officials say can take three to five years to complete. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, thousands of pilots at major airlines took early retirements, speeding up a pilot shortage that was already taking shape. Officials at Alaska say they'll need to hire 500 pilots a year for the next four years just to meet their staffing needs. This program is only one part of building out the pipeline. We want our pilot group to look like the general population. We want them to know that aviation is available for everyone. Despite some of the ongoing issues surrounding the industry, some say now would still be a good time to enter. This is a sector in the economy that's going to be growing robustly. That means that you will have a very good job. And if you like the sky, then, well, the sky is the limit. An opportunity to take flight for these diverse pilots in training. Change has been needing to be happening uh, for far too long. And, and thankfully, I've been given the opportunity to be a part of that change. In Hillsboro, Oregon, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. 
and taking a live look at the current travel conditions across the country. What you're seeing there is San Francisco, Milwaukee and Florida. Things looking good here in Milwaukee, despite maybe some on and off rain showers in Florida. Everything looks good. Maybe San Francisco just a little bit foggy or maybe it's just the camera out there. Either spots are going to be popular destinations for this weekend. And if you are planning to drink this weekend, don't drive. AAA will be working around the clock to get people home safely in Wisconsin with their tow to go program. The program goes into effect tonight at 6 and runs through Tuesday morning. If you call that number you see on your screen there, AAA dispatches a tow truck to transport the would be impaired driver and the vehicle to a safe location within a 10 mile radius. The service is free, but AAA says it should be treated as a backup plan. Well, week two of Summerfest continues today, and if you're heading out, the gates open today at noon. Music lovers will get a little nice break from the heat as temperatures will be on the more comfortable and cooler side today. But it will still be a nice one for you to throw on your festival gear and get ready to jam out to local and big music artists. And taking a look at the main stage today, Machine Gun Kelly along with Avril Lavigne is on the American Family Insurance Amphitheater stage. Other artists on some of the free stages include 2 Chains, Jesse James Decker, and and time flies for a full list of the lineup head to our website at tmj4.com. Well, Summerfest has music for everyone to enjoy, but now organizers are making sure the venues are inclusive for all. Our Tony Atkins takes a look inside Summerfest Respite Pavilion, a location to make sure people living with disabilities have what they need to enjoy the big gig. Everyone loves live music, but not everyone is able to get down to a place to enjoy a live show. Here at Summerfest Grounds, folks at the Respite Center are working to make sure that this festival is accessible to everyone. The second week of Summerfest is officially underway. At noon, dozens of music lovers made their way onto the grounds to check out their favorite bands. For me, I come down early. Um, so the crowd isn't real packed. Kane in hand, Susan Mardanovich makes sure to enjoy Summerfest as best she can. When I came in, I had both of my knees replaced, so I can walk now, <laughs> but I need the cane. This is where volunteers at the Stephen J. Schwabe Respite Pavilion can help. From lockers, showers, or just providing a cool place to relax, it's just a few benefits the center offers. If my battery even died, I got a place to go charge my scooter. For those needing them, volunteers like Judy Newman are there. It's a very friendly place. It's a nice place to be. It's a wonderful place to work. It's a wonderful place to connect with the disabled community. And it's something that is, um, it's been very beneficial and very helpful for all our, our patrons. Summerfest! Lisa Koenix and her younger brother Curtis came out to Summerfest. For the siblings, it's a tradition. We've been coming to Summerfest for many decades. Lisa hopeful others who help people living with disabilities consider coming down to take it all in. It's right by the Miller Oasis stage. It's fabulous. Don't let that stop you. Come on out. Summerfest is amazing. Reporting in Milwaukee, Tony Atkins, TMJ4 News. All right, well, thanks for waking up with us this morning as we head to break. Let's take a live look outside. We are dodging a few showers this morning and when you may need to take your weekend 4th of July party indoors. That's all coming up next in your searching forecast. Relief for drivers traveling across Wisconsin for the 4th of July weekend. Gas prices are taking a little bit of a dip. Arlene Rojas Castillo joins us from West Milwaukee with a closer look at those gas prices. Elaine, what's it looking like where you're at? Hey Brian, well things are going really good. That earlier crash that we saw right on the airport spur on the eastbound side, right near Hall Avenue, that has cleared. So there are no issues if you are traveling over to the airport this morning. Let's take a look at 4th of July travel. If you are heading out for the 4th of July, there's going to be a lot of people out on the road. AAA Wisconsin predicts about 1 million travelers will travel between Thursday and 4th of July, at least 50 miles or more. And this is despite the high gas prices that we are seeing. So that's the most traveler amount of travelers that they are predicting in 20 years. 
years and nationally they also predict air travel to be up 3%. So a lot of people hitting the roadways 4th of July falls on a Monday. So a lot of people have that extra day off. So a nice three day weekend for people. Now the Wisconsin Department of Transportation will pause most construction projects to allow the most amount of lanes to be open for travel. But keep in mind there are still major construction projects that will have reduced lanes in Kenosha County out on Highway 50, Waukesha and Milwaukee County out on I-43 for Moreland Road to the Hale Interchange. You've got reduced lanes there as well. And the northbound off ramp at Layton Avenue is closed for traffic. So just keep that in mind. Double check those construction projects before you leave for your 4th of July travel and have a plan in place. But overall traffic looks good. Here's